Welcome everyone, Kostin here on Serious Gaming with a test of patch 3.0 beta for Total War Room 2. I'll be fighting two battles. A regular city siege battle with a high level uh, city including scorpion towers which need, need to be balanced and I am specifically picking a large city with scorpion towers to showcase just how overpowered uh, these towers are against any army, yours or the enemy, doesn't matter just how strong these towers are um, and an unfortified town assault battle where I'll uh, place two AI against each other you know one AI on defensive with me observing and an AI on the attack I'm fighting here a Sparta versus Macedonia battle the Macedonians have uh, the superior army I have scorpion towers, I'm going to win. Though the purpose of this video isn't to win or lose, it's to showcase uh, the patch and the changes that they've made. Uh, the changes, they haven't really improved AI. In the patch notes, the only improvement to AI, battle AI, is that the AI will better prioritize and the capturing of victory points. Uh, to which I have to say, are you just trolling us, Creative Assembly? Oh! Better capturing of victory points in siege battles or town unfortified town assault battles. Are you just trolling us, Creative Assembly? That's what you fix in this patch, which mostly deals with balance changes uh, in battles or even on the campaign. This is what you fix. <laughs> Seriously, consi consi considering that the biggest complaint people have had with siege battles is that the AI is just an idiot who will rush for flag victory points regardless of the army that stands in its way. This is what you fix. <laughs> Incredible, really. Uh, there's a ton of fixes, but I but I'm not gonna talk about them. Instead, I'm gonna talk about the balance changes. They've reduced, uh, they've tweaked around the morale of units. They've uh, reduced the melee defense for cavalry units and some elite infantry units though they've increased the melee defense from shields uh, interestingly enough so they've reduced the melee defense for cavalry and elite units though they've increased the melee defense for um, shields that units get from shields uh, they've reduced uh, they've increased HP as well and also have made some balance changes to pikemen as well as some fixes to pikemen namely in terms of their maneuverability uh, what happened pre-patch is that if even one of your pike units was at, uh, pike soldiers in a unit was attacked then you can maneuver the entire unit because of that they've changed that here anyway here you can see scorpion towers and I need to specify this because this is a pretty big balance issue why these scorpion towers can annihilate entire armies. Like you can see here, this is a unit of foot companions, this is a unit of foot companions. Look at the kind of casualties they're getting, just trying to approach the walls right here. Just trying to approach the walls with those ladders. You've got more foot companions there, by the way. And I'm not entirely certain why these guys are taking damage. Anyway. So, the enemy has actually gotten to the walls. It's placed siege towers next to the walls it hasn't used the battering rams that I have given it this unit though of foot companions is not gonna get that near the walls scorpion towers need a nerf they either need limited ammunition because they have infinite ammunition as it stands so far uh, or they need a reduction in their firing rate or a reduction to the damage they are capable of doing because as it stands you can leave one of the worst garrisons uh, that you can possibly imagine in a city and the scorpion towers will win against even full stacks of troops trying to break in the city. Partly because the AI is bad, partly um, because that scorpion towers are simply overpowered. Now as a player I can deal with this by uh, using um, uh, ballistas or long range or artillery units and that's exactly what I've done I've used I've been using artillery units in my armies uh, since I discovered just how ridiculously overpowered these scorpion towers are another problem and this is a major one or a major annoyance that I have with the game is the bloody battle advisor he hasn't popped up yet but it's frust frustrating as hell to have to 
constantly disable the bloody annoying battle advisor in every single fucking battle that you fight in this game. Every single individual battle that you have to fight that you fight in this game, you have to disable the battle advisor. If you if you just find him annoying and you don't care to care at all for his advice. And I don't personally. Just give us an option in the game settings to permanently disable this guy. Also, change it so that this does not affect uh, the intro dialogue when you start the new campaign. Because the settings here with the battle advisor also determine uh, how you'll receive the, inform the new campaign information. You know, the, that bit of dialogue that you get when you start a new campaign. Like, it determines whether or not you get audio, text only, or text and audio. And I don't think... and these things should be separated. Okay, so, what has happened here? Well, I've dealt with the initial AI wave, and now the AI is doing nothing, absolutely nothing. And here I was hoping that this patch would fix these issues. Well, that's that for a siege battle. I might go back and do it again. Actually, I think I will do it again while removing all the siege weaponry and actually giving um, the AI some siege, s some uh, artillery units. Just a second. Yeah, just give the AI two Greek ballistas. Let's see how the AI handles this uh, right here when it has ballistas. Now, AI armies. It, the AI will sometimes get ballistas for certain armies uh, in a campaign, uh, but not always. It's not strictly, uh, it's not necessarily going to happen. Now, I'm curious about two things here, now that I've given the AI um, um, ballistas. Whether or not the AI will actually prioritize on my scorpion towers. Hold on, I forgot to remove those. If the AI does not focus at all on my Scorpion Towers, then the AI is gonna be unable to take the city. Why? Because Scorpion Towers are too powerful. And frankly, the AI should focus on those Scorpion Towers. Yes, Ballistas are a way to destroy. The Scorpion Towers are not that durable against Ballistas, nor, nor are Arrow Towers. Uh, one thing to note with Scorpion Towers, by the way, is that uh, Barbarian Settlements don't actually have them. High-level Barbarian Settlements. <laughs> Though they should have them, apparently. I mean, when you look over a city or a high-level Barbarian City, it tells you that it does have... Uh, siege engine, sh siege weapons as defenses, but it does not actually have them. Okay. One thing they have fixed, supposedly, with this patch is a slowdown or the or the uh, or units getting stuck when uh, the AI was invading a city with its. Navy. And no, it does not actually focus on the Scorpion Towers. Instead, it's gonna attack with all its army. So, siege weapons are still. Um, uh, siege towers, battering rams, ladders, and all of that still are bugged. Pathfinding in cities is still bugged. But. The AI. Well, this and the AI fares better without them, apparently. And the AI isn't, isn't actually attacking my walls here, curiously enough. So I'm just gonna move these units right here. Now the AI is moving units towards the gate. Now they're, these guys are gonna get annihilated by Scorpion Towers. Okay, they, they did implement a fix with this patch when units would just get close to a gate and not actually throw their torches. That's been fixed. At least partially from what they state in the patch notes. Okay, many units here have been killed. The gate 
it's on fire. Okay. The wall here is getting damaged. AI has lost a lot of its uh, units trying it's just just moving it's uh, just moving them slightly forward anyway the gate is down this advisor needs to creative assembly needs to get rid of this advisor by the way scorpion towers uh, do a ton of damage against uh, like against light units, the damage they do isn't that bad, but against tightly packed units, it's just enormous. It's too much. Like you can see here the amount of casualties that units are receiving here from the Scorpion Towers. Now I have projectile trails turned off, by the way. Like this unit has already lost close to over 30 units from the Scorpion Towers in a matter of a few seconds. Now the AI is going to try and get through the gate here. Beyond the damage of boiling oil, Scorpion Towers are going to have to face my phalanx here. One thing that I also believe should be changed in battles, these outlines of units need to be removed. And instead we should get circles like in every other Total War game to date. Why? Because it's a huge performance hit. That's why exactly. And here we have a bunch of lag. There are no frame rate improvements that I can notice with the patch. Now they, I here is doing what it's always done. It's trying to rush from my units to get to its fucking flag. Prioritize over. Prioritize better with capturing flags. Yeah, that's just a nice trolling. That's just nice trolling by your creative assembly. Are you just deliberately trying to insult us? To me, the solution to the AI problems, by the way, of Total War games in general, I'm not talking here about just Total War 2, because if someone tells me that Total War 2 has worse CGI than Shogun 2, where Shogun 2 had units climbing on walls instead of just torching gates, that would make more sense, then they're, they don't know what they're talking about. Obviously, these issues were not so noticeable in Shogun 2 because you had large spaces and castles where the AI fought and it was, you know, it wasn't as noticeable there as it was here. Yeah, battle AI problems. Issues existed in Shogun 2 as well. Large ones at that. So, um, because of the balance changes, by the way, to fighting all that, the AI has actually gotten through my units here for simply rushing them. They haven't routed them, any of them, by the way. Oh, one thing they've also done is decrease the penal the free hit penalty that you get when you disengage a unit in battle. They've decreased that so you can't you have more tactical flexibility when you want to redeploy units that are fighting already. So this battle is... Oh. Now keep in mind this was a high level Macedonian army with heavy melee units all around. Hoplites, shield bearers, foot companions and... Well, I would just like to point out how many of these guys have died outside the wall. Not because of my archers, I should point out, but because of these two scorpion towers outside here. So the enemy army has been routed. Okay, now let's fight an unfortified town assault. Now here I'm going to have to make some changes. I'll... Uh... No, actually I'll add an AI partner. Gonna switch this up actually first off. Um, 
give Macadon this army. Um, an AI partner, which is gonna control this army, and I'm just gonna reduce my army to just free. Oh, actually, just two units of heroes of Sparta. Elite. However, just to turn the tide of the battle if it goes poorly. And let's see how it handles an unfortified uh, town assault battle. On the defense, on one hand, and on the offense. So. Okay. General! Let's see that initial deployment here. Well, the initial deployment is pretty poor, I might, I should say. So, anyway. Let's see what AI will do. I'm just gonna move these guys right here. Control point is over there in the markets. This is the Sparta map, by the way. What the fuck is it doing? Well, that's an interesting thing. Keep on! My AI partner is on the defense. What the hell is it doing? But it's army. Now the attacking AI, uh, yeah, sure, he's gonna move down these two streets, rush through for the flag. If there were units on these two streets, they, the AI would just rush through them. Nothing new there. What the hell is the attacking AI doing, however? Uh, the defending AI doing? This makes no sense to me. One of the patch notes relates to how the AI would be able to use its units better on the defense when it's on the defense and set wars. Is this it? Oh, okay, so it's getting its shit together now. So after running around like an idiot, by the way, with this patch, uh, they've, uh, they've made it so that you can't just run with units around the entire map and not get fatigue. Uh, hit. I mean, you would eventually get it in vanilla as well, but it took a very long time and you could run pretty much across the entire map without getting fatigue issues. Now they've balanced it that amount. Oh boy. Yeah, you have the bloody idiotic AI mass there. And here's why the AI has this poor movement of units in general in battles in every total war game why because creative assembly is insistent on having dynamic battle ai yeah you're gonna do something that program that top uh, programmers at ibm are not able to achieve and that's make uh, that's to make a perfectly dynamic battle ai some people would argue you know it makes the AI uh, less boring because if you know what the ai is gonna do in every battle uh then you know then you, then you know exactly what you're gonna do. However, let me just point this out. The AI of Total War, the vanilla AI, is uh, dynamic. However, in general, you can expect it to do the same things over and over, despite that. So it's pretty poor. Also, it has this poor placement of units, poor formation handling, and all of that. Poor, uh, poor use of the streets on the defense. For maneuvering on the streets in general, actually, offense or defense doesn't really matter. Give us scripted AI because it would be able to handle this better. Just really great assembly. You're not going to be able to achieve something no one else has achieved in the industry. And if this. Instead, we get this mess. To what everyone else has done in this industry, including. Neocore, the guys behind King Arthur, uh, they're all playing War King. Uh, the King Arthur, the, the King Arthur One and King Arthur Two, which is similar in terms of scale to the Total War series, do what everyone else has done and give us scripted AI because it can handle battles better. This dynamic campaign AI is one thing, and ca dynamic campaign AI that. Uh, Total War on 2 has, especially with Patch 2.0, is the best of the series I've ever seen, even better than what I've seen in Darth Mod, actually. But this battle, yeah, yeah, it's still not so good. In fact, 
modders have been able to improve the battle AI ma by making it scripted. And when I say scripted, it means that the AI in general will use the same tactics, information, and all of that against you. That's what I mean by scripted. So you could make several scripts depending on the situation, the terrain, the battlefield type, you know. Depending on these factors, you could ha have the AI to use different scripts depending on these kind of issues. Because here it's just a bloody fucking mess. I'm not doing anything, by the way. I'm not giving orders, I'm just keeping these two units in here of Spartan Reserve. The defend I, I don't know who's winning here, by the way. It's difficult to say. It's just a fucking mess, really. Though it should be noted that the attacking eye has uh, an advantage in unit numbers and in unit quality. Phalanx here that formed up for all the shit, for all the formation mess and lack of unit cohesion, they actually formed the Phalanx line here. Of what? Several Spartan pikemen. Though the foot companions, even though they are Phalanx units, they're not using their Phalanx formation. You can see units moving from across from one side of the battlefield to another moving like brain dead idiots. Oh now we have a phalanx. So I think it's probably no that's not the general, it's just a unit of heroes of Sparta. I don't really ah this is the general. Yeah, that's actually the problem with Toronto 2's AI. It thinks in the individual unit terms, not in terms of formations. Though it has presented the front here, unified front here against the AI. And it's holding fairly well for now. Not sending the fact that it's fighting against another AI. One big blob of units here on both sides. Several units moving around chaotically on the battlefield. And the defensive AI will win. What the hell are they doing here? Huh. Bearers starting to chase after the archers and peltists, then turning back. Eh. And mercenary Cretan archer unit is probably the most effective unit the, AI, the attacking AI has had in this fight. Clear winner? Not yet. As I said, the attacking eye has an advantage in terms of units, quality, and quantity. Well, quality wise, actually. You, know, you have foot companions, shield bearers, but you also have Spartan Python and Royal Spartans. Uh, no, actually, Heroes of Sparta. Routed. Need needless to say. Yeah, let me just get the bulb here. Instead of using this unit, by the way, to actually attack these exposed units, uh, AI has done nothing. 
I'm gonna stop here and actually see if these shield bearers will actually charge all the way here. They might actually stand a chance. And they actually did charge all the way there. Massive throng of troops there. Oh, well, let's get involved. So, after a while, they actually manage to get the shit together. Hmm. Many units have already been driven off the battlefield. Companions going in, on peltists and archers. But it's over by now. Now it's trying to rush for the flag. Race for the flag. <laughs> yeah. Still running for it. Because there are less penalties for uh, units disengaging. While they're already fighting with the unit, it means AI is more effective at actually run flag through units. And nice change there. So that's a battle. These are the two battles that I wanted to show. Well, you've still got some improvements to make creative assembly. Thanks for all the bug fixes, by the way. But optimization in battles, um, frame rate in battles need to, needs to be improved. Uh, frame rate on the campaign, well, I think I can actually show you that. In my Spartan campaign, um, what kind of frame rate I'm getting with my computer. Uh, the specs are on my channel page, by the way, on the About page, if you're interested in them. I'm not going to link them in every video. Okay. Come on. Well, oh, game crashed. It's a beta patch, so... Eh, what to expect. Anyway, suffice to say that there are no real improvements to frame rate on the campaign map, at least for me. Uh, but I have a pretty powerful computer. Anyway, Quastine here on Serious Gaming, signing out. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Thank you all for watching and stay tuned for more.